This is John Henson asking, what sort of sick mind would round up the most demented clips from the week's talk shows and then have the gall to make fun of them? No. Who would think of such a diabolical plan? Me. Talk Soup Weekend, up next. Oh, man, look at this place. Oh, my God. Hey, Tom. Tom, get up, man. Holy cow, would this all fall out from our 4th of July spectacular? Man, what an incredible bash. This place is tra... What is that smell? It's right over there. Oh, man, that was a great show. Take a look at that. I think that may have been the best show we ever did. It had everything. Hey, there were John, dancing girls here? and fireworks. It got preempted by the Letterman Marathon. No way. Preempted? You're kidding me. It was the best show we've ever done. You can't preempt Eight it. Eight hours of Letterman or something. No, we got to try to recreate that. We can do it. We can't do it. No, Tom, yeah, Tom, look the it, elephants are gone, and the, I'm gonna move that. the midgets are in jail. We're never going to be able to I get the midgets. I, got, I can get them out. I got oh, a checkbook. Oh, God, preempted. Oh. I don't believe it. Well, clear the body. Let's try it one more time. Oh. Unbelievable. Best show ever. Preempted. Jeez. Hi, everybody. I'm John Henson, and welcome to the Talk Soup Weekly Wrap-Up, the show that stands for mom, baseball, apple pie, and guys who shave their chest hair and wear makeup. I'm sorry. I'm just crushed. I can't believe it. Our big 4th of July show got preempted by the Letterman Marathon, and we're just devastated, folks. I wish you could have seen it. We had our first real fireworks display here in the studio, which was awesome. Although I do feel bad about the fingers on Fred's left hand. And uh, we had the undead David Bernstein dressed up as Petsy Ross and the floats and the pageantry. And having Frank Sinatra sing the national anthem along with Barbara Streisand and Garth Brooks. It was just... Well, I'm sorry you missed it. Okay, let's see if we can recreate the magic without all that. Do the fireworks. Here goes. Coming up on the big show, we got some spectacular star-spangled highlights, including a couple of talk show hosts sucking face, the story of a love consummated in the state mental hospital, plus exploding produce. Whoopee! Yeah, great. That's almost as cool as yesterday when we had the members of the Smashing Pumpkins in here smashing pumpkins. That was so... It was clever, it was funny, it had energy. Well, first up... What trip to Daytona Beach, Florida would be complete without checking out the local flora and fauna? In particular, the parades of cross-dressers marching down every street. Strangely enough, the Chamber of Commerce plays down this point of civic pride, choosing to brag about smooth sands and rolling surf instead. Whatever. Anyway, here's Jerry Springer getting in touch with the real Daytona Beach. Understand one of those beauty contestants says sign a recording contract. It's true. Yeah, check it out. He's got style, he's got grace, he's got stubble on his face. He's a lady. 
He's got breasts out of there and a sexy dairy. Okay, all right. I, I, don't, I don't want to hear any more of this. Please, well, can we get out? Thank you. Oh, 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 really starting to miss yesterday's show. Tuesday on Jerry, you get to know senatorial candidate David Duke, former Grand Wizard of the KKK, is dying to join his right-wing colleagues in Washington. Now for a Montel highlight. By the way, Montel's 40th birthday was yesterday. Celebrated with a cake, candles, we all wore hats. Wolfgang Puck made a sculpture of him out of potato salad, but it's useless to talk about it because you'll never see it. Okay, she was a waitress. He was a traveling musician. Theirs was a love story that would transcend all time, or at least 24 hours of it. You see, the night Misty and Mark met, they were deeply attracted to one another. Afterwards, Mark thought he had met the woman of his dreams, but he hasn't seen her since, and lately, his calls have gone unanswered. Let's see if the birthday boy can sort things out. Did you do the wild thing? <laughs> you can't remember? I can remember. Can you? Well, I think she can remember, too. Please welcome Misty back to the show. conversation with Misty. Misty, you told him what? You were engaged. Is that right? Yes, I did. And is that true? No, sir. Well, why um, did you tell him you were engaged? I didn't want him to call me anymore. So, there did, you go. You, did you know that, Mark? If she would have said up front, you know, hey, I don't think it's going to work out. You travel all the time. You know, it's, it just wouldn't work out. That'd be a lot cool. That could have been a lot easier than... Uh, Wait, it had nothing to do with traveling. What did it have to do with? We didn't click at all. I was intoxicated the night that we spent together. He's nothing that I would ever consider being what I would look for in a man. And so... Wow. Am I bleeding? Are you bleeding? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't That's think harsh. so. You feel like you are? No, no, it's a harsh, harsh one. Well, at least he still has his job at Century 21. <laughs> Misty said she knew she'd made a mistake the first time Mark peeled off his pants to reveal a pair of leopard skin briefs. Now there is a big warning flag, ladies and gentlemen. Monday on Montel, get reacquainted with the most memorable couples of shows gone by. Some are still together, some have gone their separate ways, and some are simply in relationship limbo, just next door to Let's Just Be Friends Purgatory. Last week, Dweezil and Amit Zappa dropped by our studio. Among other nonsense, they said they'd been emotionally scarred by growing up with such strange names. The good news is they've found a way to fit in. They've changed their names to Orangelo and Lamangelo. Not sure who's who. Anyway, I'm hoping their triumph over adversity will inspire Conan O'Brien and China Phillips. As this late night highlight reveals, they also know what it's like to be taunted for being a little different. And your name, it's very pretty. Yours is much prettier than mine. Mine's like, all my life was like, hey, Conan, <laughs> let's fight, you know? And I was beaten mercilessly, which is why I was driven to comedy, and now I'm seeking revenge against all the celebrities. Um, I think that's what this show is anyway, isn't nothing it, Andy? Nothing's worse than yep. China Vagina, okay? Nothing is worse. <laughs> Hello, what's worse? Nothing's oh. worse! Oh. Okay, now. What the hell was that? I'm telling you, that's what I was called. They called me that in school. Kids they, are ruthless. Kids would call you that yes, in school? Yes, uh, Just don't do it. <laughs> Gee, actually, the music, it's okay. <laughs> really? Well, that's, well, what Isn't is that it? horrible? I mean, yeah. that's horrible, right? That's terrible. Well, yes, no one's disagreeing. <laughs> no one's watching going, what's the problem? You know? <laughs> Somewhere a gynecologist is watching, it's just a technical term, what's the problem? I see no problem. It's a very serious condition. <laughs> hey, you're not kidding, Annie. The side effects are absolutely frightening. Oh, sure, there, yeah. take a look. That's what it'll do to you, folks. You don't want any part of that. Put a little cream on it and it'll go away, though. Trust me, I've had it myself. Monday on Conan, comedian Stephen Wright will have an out-of-body experience so he can interview himself. Tune in and watch the fun. In this next Wahlberg highlight, Mark makes a valiant effort to translate the strange rhetoric of one of his guests, but he doesn't quite pull it off. To tell you the truth, I'm not sure what's going on either. I think it has something to do with a love triangle involving Michael, Russell, and Curtis. 
Uh, Curtis, excuse me, Curtis. You got to tell them what you got to tell them. Mm -hmm. Russell, the reason why I haven't told you was because I didn't want to destroy our friendship, if, you know, because you was between the two of us. Mm -hmm. And for you, Missy, er, <laughs> it's over for her, child. It's over for her. Oh, I mean, in, in English for us, kind of help us out here. She was close and so-called my best friend. Right. But in slept with my lover, you know, she knew we was together or whatever. And thank you, know, I guess because Miss Thank you thought she can do it better. Uh-uh, it's nothing like that. All right, wait a minute. Hold on. I'm gonna... For those of you at home who are like me and need a little interpretation of what we heard here, to the best of my knowledge, what he said was Miss Thing referring to Michael, um, is that if he could perform better sexual uh, things than he can, whatever, it's over. Well, nice try, Mark, but we had such a tough time trying to translate that clip earlier this week, we decided to bring in a professional interpreter. Let's see if he can decipher what they're saying. Call my best friend, right? But instead of my lover, you know, she knew we were together or whatever. And thank you, know, I guess because Miss Thank you. No, no, guys, guys, uh, Fred, like Fred, what are you doing? I said interpreter. Interpret. This is an interpretive dancer. Guys, come on, use your heads here. I clearly said interpreter. Interpretive dancer, duh. Monday on Mark. Help! I need a psychic love doctor. Stat. Of course, if he's a psychic, you should know that already, right? Because he's a psychic. It's funny. Still to come. Oh, no, not this guy again. Come on. We got exploding watermelons, a man who loves feet, plus frogs, fro frogs, frogs, frogs. Stupid interpretive dancer. We'll be back right after this. Dumb, stupid, dumb, dumb, dumb. You're watching Talk Soup's belated Fourth of July special, proving you don't have to be punctual to be patriotic. I'm Uncle Sam Magoo. Tani says her husband Mike is a real miser, but that hasn't always been the case. When they were first dating, he used to shower her with gifts and money and pickles. If anything, he was generous to a fault. So why the big change? Well, that's what Marilyn Kagan intends to find out in the course of this psychologically revealing highlight. He last week had a $10 bill in his pocket. I had $2 in my wallet. He took my $2 because he didn't want to break his 10 to go get a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> and, I, and I didn't know it. <laughs> you know, I... I not, he, he, now, You've been together, what, eight it's your years? Opinion. Yeah, eight we've been years. married and five. Married five, together eight, and in all the years you've known Mr. Mike, is he, has he always been no. very much like no. no. In what way was he different? How has he changed? Oh, he, I could just even think about wanting something, he'd buy it like that. Flowers, you know, if I wanted a Mrs. Phil cookie, he'd buy me a dozen, two dozen. Mm -hmm. A pickle, he'd buy me the whole big thing like that. Anything I wanted, very generous. anything. Oh, anything. Friends would even say, you know, I had even friends would even say, Tony, I want that, you know, and joke to see, can you get Mike to get it for you? I can get Mike to get anything. Well, how long did that last? Till I got married. Oh, we got married. Oh, you agree with this, oh, Mike. Yeah. So you were very generous at first. Then you got married, and what happened, Mike? It's kind of like reeling in a fish, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Once you got him, you got him. Hey, funny, you should bring up the humorous fishing analogy, Mike. After all, there are a lot of fish in the sea, aren't there? I think we know where that money is going. Take a look at this. Huh? Hot nights with cheap seafood, eh? And what about this candid shot of you frolicking with one of your scaly paramours? And this shocking photo! Oh, wow, a grouper fetish. You are a sick man indeed. Tuesday on Marilyn Kagan. You're too young to have sex. Look on the bright side. At least I'm not saying you're too homely to have sex. A foot is a terrible thing to waste. That's Logan's philosophy. He won't even consider dating a woman unless she's willing to bear it all. That's right. Lose the laces, baby. Let that tongue flap out. Oh, yeah. Now ditch the sock. Yeah, you know what I like. Oh, yes, that's perfection. I'm paraphrasing here. Anyway, here's Logan getting better acquainted with a secret admirer by the name of Naomi on The Maury Povich Show. 
would the key be if she took her shoe off? Take, take, take. Maybe not just that being the key, but it would help. Oh, definitely. Naomi, would you want to take your shoe off? All right. My sock. No. No. Not the sock. But my sock. No. Leave the sock on or I don't care. Whatever you want to do. It's up to. You. It's up to you. I like that. I like the toes too, man. That's just that's dead right, right there, man. Hey, the toes. Okay. Logan says he's turned on by Naomi's feet and he wants to start dating her. Hi, <laughs> young fetish love. Tuesday on Maury, find out how to keep criminals from breaking into your home and anyone else's, for that matter. A panel of experts will reveal the best way to burglar-proof your property. Well, I don't know if I can sustain this pace much longer, but I'm willing to try. Still to come, eat gads. It's this week's viewer mail segment. Also ahead, socks in bondage. And after this break, excuse me, ma'am, but did your husband give you permission to badmouth him on national television, huh? He just is so demanding and controlling. Um, he, if I think about going to the store without him saying it's okay, you know, he, he has a fit. Happy Fourth of July weekend, everybody. I'm not wearing that dumb outfit I wore last year. You know the one I'm talking about. Yeah, oh, there it is. Back during the days when I was impressionable and I'd do whatever you freaks asked me to. Now I'm jaded. As you know, talk soup has always been frog friendly. But this is the first time we've ever featured three different species of frogs in a single oh, highlight. Oh, wow, it's about time. Oh, great. Dermot the Frog, wow. Kermit Stunt Double. Beautiful. Yesterday, we had Michigan J, the WB Frog, who sings and dances. It was great. Oh, yeah, awesome. stop whining and introduce the clip. All right, go suck a fly, you frog. Yeah. Anyway, it's time to let Mike Mulligan work his magic. He's the curator of the amphibian collection in the Shedd Aquarium in Chicago. Here he is introducing CBS This Morning host... John Roberts to a few of his croaking friends. Hey, knock it off. Is it a Chaco horned toad? What, what is this uh, indigenous to? Well, he's, he's from Argentina. Uh, most people think of frogs as being in ponds. This guy has adapted to life in the, in, the, in the desert. He literally buries himself down during the dry season, secretes a cocoon to retain moisture, which is very important for all frogs. What's the cocoon made of? Uh, mucus. It secretes mucus from his skin. Their skins are like chemical factories. So they secrete this cocoon and, and they wait okay. for the rains to come. Here's, here's a nice looking frog. This is a waxy tree frog? A waxy monkey tree frog. Uh, this is also adapted to uh, life in uh, very dry, arid environments. And it actually secretes, you can see a sheen on the skin. It uh, secretes a, a waxy substance that mm -hmm. literally moves around, uh, spreads it over its body with its, its limbs. So a lot, a lot of frogs take in water through their skin, but this one This doesn't. one can't. It actually has to drink water. Wow. Great looking frog. We've, we've got sort of the mother of all toads, uh, <clears throat> if, if you will. I saw these uh, all over the place when I lived in Florida. Look at this toad. What's this one called? It's a marine toad. They're uh, indigenous to uh, Central and South America, but they've been introduced all over the world, so there are thousands of them in Florida. This is also called a bufo toad? Bufo, yeah, they call them bufo. Mm, which right. has a little bit of toxin, and sometimes people lick that toxin to right. try to get high. No kidding. Uh, what are you guys uh, staring at? You can get a rush from licking frogs. <laughs> oh, no. No! Come on, come on. No, 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 no. Come on. Hey, 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 hey. hey. No, no, leave, leave the frog alone, I said. Come, all right, boys, let, let go of the frog. I'm serious now. Tuesday on CBS This Morning, whatever happened to Lou Diamond Phillips? Believe it or not, he's starring in The King and I on Broadway. I guess La Bamba 2, Richie Gets Resurrected, is out of the question. Oh, stop. Oh, all right, oh, that's enough, I've said. Let go of the frog. Freaks. Cecil is a bossy guy at best. He wants his wife, Barbara, to do what he wants, when he wants, the way he wants it. No arguments. Barbara has only one objection to this overbearing behavior. She's not a slave! Here she is telling Sally Jesse Raphael how Cecil tries to control her life and order her daughter around as well. It's Cecil's way or no way, exactly. right? Exactly. That's right. He just 
it's so demanding and controlling. Um, he, if I think about going to the store without him saying it's okay, you know, he, he has a fit. I took my daughter Christmas shopping. Um, I got home, he wasn't home, but he had been home and wrote a note saying, I don't know why you did this. I told you, you should have gone on Saturday and this was not authorized. <laughs> Just her husband, right? You are not her mother or her father to tell her what, when, where, and how. Exactly. You did not give birth to her. I can't so who the hell him. are you other than the man who put the ring on her? I your daughter. Her. Her. <laughs> and I keep telling him I'm 30. How does your daughter like? How does your daughter feel about him? Uh, truthfully, absolutely <clears throat> truthfully, she cannot stand him. <laughs> Well, if revealing that on national television doesn't bring them closer together, I don't know what will. Tuesday on Sally, a private investigator will show you how to find out if your spouse is having an affair or if he's really just into women's perfume and self-inflicted hickeys like some people I know. There's a clip of the week with your name on it still to come. But first, find out why watermelons and gunpowder don't mix. Plus, G talks about her X-rated profession here on E. Oh, hey, Dermot. Dermot, come here for a minute. I want to talk to you about something. Dermot, co seriously, come over here. This is Sugar Ray Leonard reporting ringside. We're about halfway through this big July 4th weekend bout. Henson is tired, but he's not hurt. It's time for him to be aggressive. It's time for him to bring the fight to the challenger. It's time for the talk soup quote of the week. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Today's quote comes from Late Night with Conan O'Brien. Here's Conan himself impressing China Phillips with his rickish charm. Oh. Okay. All right. You know, I have the same reaction as certain shellfish. Moving on. Can we see a shot of author William Kane, please? This man is the foremost kissing authority in the world, ladies and gentlemen. That's right, forget Fabio, forget Brad Pitt. Big Willie is the man. Here he is prompting Charlie Chase to lay a fat, sloppy one on his co-host, Laurie Ann Crook. Not surprisingly, the sexual tension in this high line is palpable. Is it on the lips or on the cheek? Well, you're saying goodnight, so you're, you're, you don't know. So we'll see what happens, okay? <laughs> You never know. You you want you want to kiss on the lips. Everybody wants to kiss on the lips, but you're afraid that the other person doesn't want it. So you get closer. Take a little tiny baby step towards each other. Take another baby step. Did you have onions last night? Before? Only a cigar. Talk about how fresh your breath is. Yeah, you had a mint, and now you you get closer. No, 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 no. no, no. Well, she's making us two intimates. See, we're like mice. Oh, okay, why why don't you say talk? It'll make it easier. Like, okay. I mean, it was see, a good she's show. fired up. She's being next. No. To She's fired up. I know. You know. I am just... Okay, so the show's over and okay. Oh, it's like, hey, you know. See you later. Ah! Yeah. For those of you at home, wait a minute. Let's analyze that. It was so wet. It was no, cold. No, no. <laughs> you know, oh, I got that nice. cigar thing transferred over there. It was half. It was half. It was like half lip, half cheek. Now, what does okay. that tell you, Bill? That, that, that there's some excitement going on. <laughs> sure. At first, Charlie and Lorianne seemed a little bashful about kissing one another. But later on, they got really into it. Oh, boy. Oh, God. Get a room, you two, for God's sake. Thanks. That oh, that's my reaction exactly, Conan. That is graphic. Okay, Wednesday on Crook and Chase, meet Rosemaster Lark Foster. Lark wasn't always the world's premier gardening expert, but then the other guy died in a mysterious troweling accident. So, Lark will be dropping by to show Lorianne and Charlie how to grow prize-winning roses and bask in his newfound glory. Murder! <laughs> Don't tell Lady she's a tramp. She prefers the term coital engineer. And don't call her friend G a pimp. She prefers the term personal manager. In this Jerry highlight, Lady and one of her fellow engineers sit obediently next to G while she sets the record straight about her adventures in the skin trade. 
you are their personal manager. What? Yes, pimp is such an ugly word. Okay. Personal manager is more like okay. it than me. Okay, sure. I'm, I'll call by whatever word you... That's fair. You want to be called that, I will. What is it that you do for them? What do I do for them? I take care of them in every way. I buy their clothing. We eat proper. We live in a beautiful place. I watch their backs. Uh, why would you buy their clothing? How do you earn a living? Off of that. Off of them. Wait, you told me you don't give her your money. No, I take all their money. I take Wait. all their money. Wait, okay, she just said... I, she don't take our money like that. We give, give it to her. So. Okay. I take all their money. I take all of it. I make sure they have good clothing, good meals. We don't need it. You know what I mean? No. And prime rib steak, lobster. All right, whatever, whatever. And we got to eat out. We some expensive hoes if we got the bin. That's right. You know I hate to admit it, but she's got a point there. After all, if you're going to be a coital engineer, you might as well be an expensive one. Those values made America the greatest nation on earth. You betcha. Couldn't agree with you more, sir. Friday on Jerry, male guests will confront the pushy so-and-sos who are moving in on their turf. The catch is, these romantic rivals are of the female persuasion. That's why we refer to them as so-and-sos. This week, the Home and Family Show joined the ranks of our beloved Talk Soup regulars. Host Christina Farrar and Chuck Woolery can be seen every morning on the Family Channel. And in this debut highlight, they're discussing what to do with your old socks. Here's Ron Lucas, the ventriloquist detective who broke the Dexter case, showing Christina and Chuck how to make sock puppets to amuse the kids. Line the knuckles up with the heel, tuck the toe back. Knuckles up with the heel. Okay. Hi there, what do you think? Oh, look okay. at Hello there. Yeah, okay. Except the mouth won't stay, so you need rubber bands, which is what I happen to have here. There's a whole bunch there. And that'll, like, hold the mouth in place. What do you think? <laughs> Hello. Now, if you use Velcro to make eyes... Oh, this is going by really fast. Oh, here. Okay, okay, really okay. Fast. Wait, wait, wait. No, I need to really put impressed. this thing in here with the... Like okay. A, hi there. Now, you can make okay. it smile. Okay. <laughs> I need an eye. <laughs> I only have one eye. What do you think? Uh, it sort of looks like a puppet on acid. I know. Yeah, yeah okay, hang on a second. Okay. There you go. Okay. All right. Here you go. You're supposed to talk. Like, okay. Right, do something. Okay. Hello. All right. Now, Hello. Um, Right. Now, if you use oh. other rubber bands to yeah. hold pieces in place, can I have one? Yes, here you Thank go. Thank you very much. Pieces in place. Well, here's what I've got. I've got another sock, but we're going to pretend it's hair this time. If you tuck it like that, it looks like hair. Yeah. Yeah, see, you're not male, you're going to be female. Oh, I am. I didn't know. There you go, see? <laughs> and then you have a little scarf here, and you've got like a dress. Ow, oh, there's hold there's still, no, for God's sake. Me. Come this on. Is stupid. All right, Stop almost. With the there. rubber bands. It's fun. It it's is fun. stupid. Okay, let's take a look. I think uh, we're finished here. How humiliating. Okay. You revel in my shame and degradation. Now, no, don't you? I do don't not. You? I don't you? Don't you? All right, maybe a little. Huh. Oh, bite me, won't you? Come on, Ugh. take a look. It's not that bad, see? Whoa, <laughs> I'm quite the happy. Oh, but I need a full-length mirror. <laughs> okay, go check it out. Wow! Thursday on Home and Family. I've got the look! <laughs> and the flavor. Learn all about human bowling. Wait a minute, is there any other kind? Ant bowling or farm and bowling? Bowling for groupers? Any of those sound familiar? We've still got some viewer mail coming your way. Also in the offing, can Joe really be faithful? And does Amina want to stick around to find out? Plus, the story of a therapist who became romantically involved with one of her female patients. She Kevin. seduced you in the depression unit <laughs> of the mental hospital. As unusual as it sounds, yes, that's what happened. Happy birthday, Uncle Sam. We salute you. Who are you? This post Fourth of July celebration is awfully quiet. Too quiet, if you know what I mean. After all, what is Independence Day about but blowing stuff up? Fortunately, we got a highlight from CBS this morning. The worst one is coming up, and that's the quarter stick, which is five times more powerful than the M80 that you just saw. And the quarter stick can take off hands, horrible burns, even can cause death. Okay, can we have somebody light the, uh, the quarter stick for the demonstration? Uh, 
That's, that's the watermelon demonstration back there. That's right. The reason there's a watermelon is to show just how powerful this is to simulate actually what can happen to human flesh. Oh my goodness. Hattie, you have to believe that is a major explosion. That was Ann Brown of the Consumer Product Safety Commission. If you'll excuse me for saying so, I think she's really missing the boat on this one. Sure, fireworks can be dangerous, but it's those darn watermelons you really have to watch out for. Our director, Fred Mendez, was involved in a horrible melon-related accident just weeks ago. I'm ready. <laughs> okay. One, two, go. three. Ah. Oh. Oh, okay. I'm okay. <laughs> I should have held it up here because there is all the... See what I'm talking about, folks. Clearly, that was a faulty melon. Thursday on CBS This Morning, Independence Day star Bill Pullman will be dropping by to discuss his portrayal of the President of these United States. Well, this is sort of an a la carte highlight. It needs no embellishment, no jokes or bells or whistles. These are the facts. Mary Ann was married for 28 years and had four kids, yet she felt something was missing in her life. As a result, she began going to therapy. Then a strange thing happened. She started to feel attracted to her female therapist. Here she is telling Maury Povich about the time the two of them decided to take their one-on-one -on -one sessions to a new level. Well, my first experience was as a young teenager, but I discounted all that all those years. And other than that, that was my very first experience. It was my very first experience with that electricity, that <laughs> light bulb effect. And she capitalized on that and um, told me that uh, we could have a relationship, but it would have to be after I terminated therapy. And so, of course, I went in the next week and terminated therapy. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, as I was leaving that night, there was a snowstorm. and. The secretary said, you can't go anywhere. Um, everyone's blocked in because of the snowstorm. And uh, so the therapist found a uh, two bedroom uh, unit on the depression unit of the uh, mental health center that I was visiting. And Wait we a spent second. the night together. She seduced you in the depression unit <laughs> of the mental hospital. As unusual as it sounds, yes, that's what happened. Hey, Thursday on Maury, incredible stories of survival. Guests will relive their horrifying experiences battling sharks and alligators and monkey frogs. Hey. Hey, the voices in my head have stopped. Either that Thorazine's starting to work or it's time to read a little viewer mail. Hey, all right. This week's letter comes to us from Megan Rooney and Sarah Burgett of Concord, Michigan, and they write, Dear John, you pick pointless letters from stupid people every week. My friend Sarah and I love talk soup, but now we feel that viewer mail is a waste of precious talk soup time. We want to know what roundhead picks these stupid letters out each week. Well, gee, girls, don't you think that's a little strong? The guy who picks our letters works very hard, and to call him a roundhead is... Hi, George. Who's calling me a roundhead? Oh. I'm not going to stand for it. I do the best I can. I work hard trying to sort out this mail. Yeah. Come with purpose. I don't need anyone to call it. And what if my head, it's not round. That's right. Don't get excited, George. Don't get excited. I'm going to show you some round fist. Oh, I no. tell you, I'm not going to take it. No, no, How George. How could you, I find out who it is? You, well, there's an address right here on uh -huh. that letter. But you really I'm shouldn't come do up. That, don't you know? tell me. There's nobody can stop me when I lose my oh, temper. No. I done lost the temper and now. There's no way. Me. Hey, sir. Oh, I can't. Oh, no. Now, you the great one. You the great one. George, I must tell you, just cool it. Your job is to read talk suit mail, okay? Okay. Get that through but, but, your head. But, 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 you did not get to no, where you are with your fists. Okay. That's okay. right, George. Yeah, you yeah, did. Right. And they say that they love talk soup. They just think that the uh, quote of the week is a little lame. Excuse me? That's I what do you quote. write that. I do that. Uh oh. Who do you think you are? Uh, run, girls. <laughs> We're going to find you, Megan. And when run. we do, get, get, I'll tell get away you, now. we are going <laughs> to find you wherever you are. I'm following this direction. This 
is the Talk Soup Weekly Wrap-Up, bringing you the best in TV talk show highlights in 1776. Before this appearance on The Marilyn Kagan Show, Amina hadn't seen her husband, Joe, for a month. The two of them had a falling out involving another woman, and Joe hit the road, leaving his pregnant missus behind. The trouble stems from Joe's desire to sleep with two women at the same time. In fact, he was trying to orchestrate just such a menage a trois when their ugly falling out occurred. Let's see if Marilyn Kagan can help these two pick up the pieces of their shattered relationship and move on. Now, what is this about for you that you're crying? Is it because of the words or because you're still scared? Because, um, well, I'm pregnant. Yes, you are. And I already felt insecure. Yes, I know, honey. Mm. And then, you know, I just don't want to lose him over, you know, you know a sexual act. If you lose him over a sexual act, the, re the relationship and the marriage was not built on love and compassion. And I look in Joe's eyes, and all his hot stuff is gone, and he's just a good guy who loves you. And in the next six months or five months, however long you're going to keep this baby inside the oven, she's going to need that extra care and love. Her hormones are going to be racing out of the, out of the room. She's going to feel ugly and fat and insecure, and she's going to need you to make sure that you do your part in bringing this healthy baby into the world, which is being loving and compassionate to your wife. Okay? You going to do it? Well, I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. This is just Joe. And joke. you know what, Joe? You need to wipe those jokes away. Wait, 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 Joe. Don't wipe those jokes away. Send them to us. We need them. Come on. The more tasteless, the better. Send them in care of Top Soup. E, PO Box 4897, New Los Angeles, California, Neater Double Walk 48. And please, no CODs. Friday on Maryland, learn all about revenge sex. When making love to someone is the worst punishment you can inflict upon them, what is that saying about your self-esteem? Hey, guys, look what Crook and Chase sent us. You know, they're so sweet. Every time they have a cooking segment, we make out like bandits. They send us cakes and chocolate and chili, all sorts of stuff. I wonder what it is this time. It looks like chutney. Yeah, but it's sort of a different consistency. I tell you what, why don't we watch this Crook and Chase highlight while we try to guess the identity of today's mystery treat. Here at 50 feet, accelerate. Oh! Woo! <laughs> and then we're going to roll 360 degrees to the left. And it's a slow, graceful roll. Oh, God. Through the knife edge. <laughs> now it's being inverted. My 29. Oh, God. and chase ice cream you scream we all scream for national ice cream month Lorian will be picking out before taking a turn on six flags new spin and puke ride something tells me they're going to be more perks coming our way okay <laughs> <laughs> marky <Marky> puke <laughs> bringing people closer together that's what gordon elliott does best sometimes with the help of a silly mask you're about to meet harry and pam He's an aspiring singer who wants to hit the big time. She's a young, frustrated lady who's tired of playing second fiddle to her boyfriend's musical career. In particular, she's peeved because Harry stood her up on the night they were supposed to get engaged. Apparently, he got called to make a last-minute gig. Well, let's see if Cyrano to Elliot can bring these two closer together. And I apologize for the terrible error I made on New Year's Eve. And I apologize for the terrible error I made on New Year's Eve. I will never again put my singing career before you. I'll never again put my singing career before you. Do you really mean that? I ask her first, so. I, we have to have a compromise about that. Hey. Compromise? No, we're going to talk about it You're first. You're following so the you script here. Harry, stop it. Okay. <laughs> I want you to understand that there is no other woman okay. in uh, my life more important than you. Not even this floozy you are talking to in Florida, Pam. 
There's no other woman in my life. <laughs> more important than you. More important than you. Not even this floozy you are talking to in Florida. Not even this floozy that you're talking to on the phone all the time. Okay. Now. Yes, Brian? I'm, I'm sorry, but there's, there's something hanging from your bedoles. It's... <laughs> it's the string from the mask. Uh, uh, Wait, on your lip. Uh, there you go. <laughs> This may look very bad to some viewers, but, uh, oh, there you go. Oh, that's pretty embarrassing, but I can identify. When you're on TV all the time, eventually the cameras catch you doing something embarrassing. Why, I remember just the other day, we were having a taping. Janiqua says she wasn't always a topless dancer, but the money was so good she couldn't... Yeah? sorry, but there's something hanging from your ear. What? <laughs> a worm, I can't believe it. I'm so embarrassed. I didn't know. I'm sorry. Yeah, I felt so stupid, but, you know, not as bad as Mark did when he ate puke a couple minutes ago. So, still to come on Talk Soup, it's our clip of the week. We'll introduce you to a 73 year old grandma and her 23 year old lover. Ooh! Beatrice is 73. Daryl is just 23. Do the math. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing our top soup clip of the week. Beatrice, you look pretty darn good for 73, doesn't she? <laughs> <laughs> Let me get this straight. You're 73 and, and by the way, I find this much more amazing than your love affair. You have had 18 children? Yep. Oh. What a make here? Now, wait a minute. I don't know where she is. You have given birth to 18 children? Yep. Yep. Any multiple births? No. 18 See? years of pregnancy? Yes, I guess it was all right. <laughs> Can you imagine? 18 children. And you have 40 grandchildren? Mm-hmm. Wow. And you have a 23-year-old lover? Is that called robbing the cradle? Yes. Oh, it is. <laughs> okay, that about does it for our belated 4th of July special. Be sure to check out Sugar Ray Leonard's Fight Zone this weekend on Pay-Per-View. It's an interactive special featuring top fighters from around the world. Also, pick up a copy of George Foreman's Knock Out the Fat Barbecue and Grilling Cookbook. It's in bookstores now. We leave you with a look at these two great champions doing what they do best. See ya. Are you ready? This is a real honor, Mr. Foreman. <laughs> Take those glasses off, son. Hey, it's Ray Leonard! No, it's not. <laughs> oh, what a nice girl. Let me shake your hand. What are your biggest fans? Oh, I love you too, but you know what? This is against my religion. Oh. Not in the face! Not in the face! <laughs> Man, this looks so nervous. This, I well, I just, I'll show you what happens. Okay. Here. Well, I survived that first punch from George, I don't think. <laughs> I... <laughs> Wanna go get a hamburger? <laughs> This is such a thrill. You know, how old are you? Uh, 30. Doesn't matter. Oh. Thanks, Lep. This is great. <laughs> hey, I just wanted to say thanks for doing this. I show. love your show, man. In fact, I want to write you a letter. Oh, really? It's coming. Okay. Right now. Cool. Uh, great show. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How'd you like that? A few old stands to you. What a great bunch of guys. Hello, mother.